morning, Reach Church, and Happy New Year. Can you believe it? 2019 is here already. Uh, just by show of hands, how many of you guys made it to midnight? Will you lift up your hands? Let me show you made up to midnight. Make some noise. That's pretty good. How many of you guys were in bed by 10? Raise your hands, make some noise. Yes. Uh, Sarah and I are a part of that crowd. On New Year's Eve, we were definitely in bed by uh, 10 p.m. The twins have decided, ever since we switched them over to their toddler beds and this wonderful time change that our country does, uh, they get up around anywhere from 5 to 6.30, and so that's pretty nice. Uh, I know for some of you, that's not too early, but in the Stewart household, that is very early. And so we decided to celebrate uh, early with, uh, would that be the East Coast? And uh, did that, and then we were in bed by 10 o'clock, so uh, praise God for that. How many of you guys had a great time for your, uh, spending time with your family on Christmas? Make some noise. Man, uh, I want to say this is that if you were here for the, if you happen to miss the last service in 2018, I want to strongly encourage you to go back and listen to that message uh, Grant preached uh, for us on that Sunday, and he did an absolutely wonderful job. And so I'm telling you, you need to listen to this message as you begin the new year in 2019. So make sure you go back if you were gone that service and listen to that. Um, I do want to just give you a quick recap real quick. Uh, some of you may not have heard this because you were gone a little bit because the holidays are very hectic for a lot of people. Before we get started today, and it's this, is that we had the opportunity to bless Bless 154 kids in our community with over 462 presents that you guys gave. Come on now. Come on now. Over 154 kids were blessed in this community because of you guys' generosity, and we want to thank you so much for that. And just it wasn't a gift. I mean, over 462 gifts were given through this church. How cool is that? And we tell you guys all the time that not only are you, because of your generosity that we're able to bless people right here in Sand Springs, but also all around the world. And I'm happy to let you know that not only do we be able to bless some people right here in our community, but we're also be able to bless some people through our other churches overseas. And one of the ones I really wanted to show you was we're able to partner with our Reach Church in Burma. And these guys went through, did some couple different things in a couple different villages. I want to throw up this picture to you and check this out. This is, uh, I was amazed by this for multiple reasons. For one, if you guys can see this, is that the front there is where they have all the kids, and the back is where the parents are sitting, and I want you to know, I'm going to hire some of these people to come talk to my kids. Because look at them, nobody's running, nobody's moving, nobody, I don't even think anybody's crying. And I don't know how they did that, but that's just amazing to me. And, and you can see that. And then if you look back on the far left back there, you can see all the rice bags that were back there. And I'm happy to tell you I want to read this because I want, don't want to mess this up. Uh, we fed, um, where did this go? Man, 856 people over a two-day period because of your guys' generosity. And here's the best news. We fed 856 of them with physical food, but they also received some spiritual food. And I'm happy to report to you guys that out of those 856, 51 of them received Jesus Christ for the first time as their Lord and Savior. How awesome is that? That's because of your guys' generosity. So I want to thank you so much for being such a generous church. And I want to say a special thank you to all of our monthly missions partners. And if you're not a monthly missions partner with us in 2019, I want to encourage you about praying about becoming one because you can make a difference not only right here in Sand Springs but all around the world. And all the money that you give goes to missions locally and overseas. So thank you so much. Can I get an Amen. amen. Well, we are starting a brand new series this morning that we're entitling Fresh Start. Let's look at the verse on the screens that we're going to be building this series around. It's found in 2 Corinthians first 5, uh, chapter 16 is where it starts. And it says this, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. How I many you know we could probably stop and do a, a message just on that verse right there? We don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. How many you know that can get you in trouble. 
He said, we look at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong. How many know he's saying that when the Messiah came, they all expected it to be something different. And when he came, he was just basically normal like you and I. And they all expected something completely different and it threw him completely off. And if we're not careful, we can miss what God wants to do in our lives because we're looking for something else. Amen? So you have to be careful what God wants to do. Uh, I started thinking about this and I thought about that um, undercover boss. How many of you guys have, have watched that show before? You just never know. That show just cracks me up is because this guy who's with you and you just think it's this normal person, little did you know this person has the opportunity to change your life. And I want you to know that's the God that we serve this morning. And then when he sends people in your lives, you never know the people he could, you could be next to and the opportunity that could be opened up to you just because you're in the right place at the right time. Can I get an amen to that? So don't look at people how they look. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Notice what he says. Now we look inside and we see that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start. Anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start. So the series we're kicking off this morning is just based off of that last verse right there. And it's called a fresh start. How many of you guys could use a fresh start in 2019? Can you make some noise? I don't know about you guys, but I could. I absolutely love fresh starts. One of my favorite things in the world is when a Monday falls on the first day of the week. I don't know if you guys, does anybody else is like that about me? I know there's one other person in here besides me and Holly that absolutely love this. And so basically what I'm trying to say is this, if like, for example, if this month, if Monday would have fell on January the 1st, it would have been the perfect month for me. And how many know we just missed it just by that much? And I think this was going to be my banner year, but I just missed it by that much. And so I'm not going to have a banner year, but I'm going to have a great year. So that's how I'm looking at it. <laughs> and so this is one of the things that I truly, I do love. And I'm kind of, one of my tendencies to be OCD on some weird things like that. And it makes Sarah completely bonkers all the time when I think that. Because what happens is, how many know you guys are probably like me. You'll have a great idea. You'll want to start something fresh. And you want to do something. Then you fall off the train. And so then what happens is I'm like, oh, my goodness, there's a Monday coming up. And it's going to be the first. And it's the best thing ever. And so what I do is I just go completely crazy. And Sarah will come home and she'll be like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm just eating some chips and dips and some sugar and some pop and all this. And she's like, why? And I'm like, because Monday's coming. <laughs> and she's like, what's Monday? And I'm like, it's the first. She's like, what does that mean? I'm like, it's a fresh start. And she's like, well, why don't you start now? And I'm like, no, I want to start on Monday. <laughs> I'm going to finish this week strong. You know how we encourage people to finish the year strong? Well, I do that with my life every once in a while, and I'll finish the week real strong because I have great intentions of starting the new year fresh. But how many know this is what the Bible is telling us about with God, is that anyone that's united with Christ, that we automatically can have a fresh start. And I don't know about you guys, but I love fresh starts. The new year brings a unique opportunity for a fresh start in our lives. And over the next several weeks, we're going to be talking about some different areas where we can experience a fresh start in our lives. So just by making some noise, could anybody use a fresh start in 2019 in some areas of your life? Will you make some noise if that's you? Yeah, that's, I'm there right there with you. So here's the first truth that I want to share with you as we move into this. It's this. You can't go back and change your past, but you can start fresh and change your future. You can't go back and change your past, but you can start fresh and change your future. How many know that's good news? I said, how many know that's good news? I said it another way. I'm going to put it on the screen for you this is way. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. How many are thankful for that this morning if you, as you get a little bit older? As I look back on my life, I want you to, there's nothing I can do about my 20s. There's nothing I can do about my teenage years. There's nothing I can do about my 30s. I can do something about my 40s and beyond. I can't even do anything about 2018. The only thing that I can do about 2018 is learn from it. That's the only thing that we can do from it. But the one thing I want you to get is this. 
is that I don't care where you are in your life. You might be a teenager. You might be in your 20s. You might be in your 30s. You might be in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. But here's the thing. Your ending doesn't have to be the same way as your beginning. We all can start right where we are right now, and we can all change the way our future looks. Can I get an amen to that? Praise the Lord. I'm not sure about you guys, but there are definitely some areas in my life that I could use a fresh start in. Anybody else? I know personally during 2018 there were several times that I blew it as a father. I blew it as a husband. I blew it as a friend. I blew it probably as the pastor. I probably blew it as a boss. There are probably multiple areas that I blew it in. But here's the great news. When you're with Christ, we're automatically given a fresh start. And that's what this whole series we're going to encourage you about is that, listen, the past is the past. There's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. You can sit there and you can whine and you can cry. You can uh, just be so upset and just, just waddle in that for a long time. But I want you to know it's not going to change anything. The only thing that you can change is your future. And how many know I believe with Christ our future is bright? As how many know our future is bright? Come on now. The beginning of the new year often is filled with dreams of personal transformation. We want to eat healthier, exercise more, read some more books, eliminate bad habits like quit smoking, and we want to get out of debt. We vow to make time for our spouse and kids and finally take that vacation. Is anybody, that's your goal this year, is I'm going to take that vacation and make some noise? Anybody? Yeah, now you're waking up, yeah. We set goals for losing a certain amount of weight, reading a specific number of books, and going to the gym a certain amount of times, and all these things are great, and I encourage you to do them. But I personally believe the greatest change we can ever experience is not a physical one, but a spiritual one. The greatest change we will ever experience in our lives is not a physical one, it's a spiritual one. Now, I, don't get me wrong, I encourage you. Some people this time of year, they're like, Oh, you know, I don't care about resolutions. And what I found is most of those people who don't care about resolutions is because they have started some in the past and they didn't fulfill them, and therefore now they're negative about them. Right? So here's what I want to encourage you with. Dream big this year. Make some resolutions. So what if you miss some of them? How many know you'll move forward even if you try to go after some of those resolutions. So don't be down on these resolutions. I want to encourage you to follow some of those. Make some of those. Sit down at the beginning of the year. This is the perfect time and say, what do I want 2019 to look like? And begin to write those things down. And see. And then as you look back in 2019, as you close out that year, go back and see all that God did in your life in 2019. But the greatest transformation I believe that you'll ever see take place has nothing to do with the physical, but has to do with a spiritual and that's what I want to encourage you this year in this beginning of this new series, this first week is this. It's a spiritual change that I want to encourage you to pursue. So I'm going to put some, a picture of something on the screens. And if you know what this is, don't shout it out. Just simply raise your hand if you know what that is. It, some people are not raising their hands. I'm a little confused. All right, there. Okay, if you, now, if you know what that is, now just shout it out if you know what that is. Some of you still don't know. <laughs> turn, so we can help people out, turn to both of your neighbors and say, it's a key. It's a key. <laughs> You're helping your neighbor out. Now turn to both of your neighbors and say, thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I know it's a liquor commercial, but I absolutely love Captain Obvious. That's not liquor, is it? No, that's the other captain. That's Captain Morgan. Sorry. Um, (laughs) It was a rough ending of 2018. They're all captains, remember? Okay, never mind. Um, Hotels, that's what it is, Captain Obvious. There it is. I'm back on track. I love watching that guy and that new one where he comes in there and he has a little horse and, and all that stuff. But anyway, I better move on. So... Um, it's a key. It's a key. That's what we're going to say. Uh, and I'm going to help some of you out because you were a little confused and some of you still didn't know what it was until your neighbor told you. I'm um, actually, I did, this is what you guys pay me for, and I did about 30 hours of researching into keys. And so I actually have the definition 
of what a key is for you guys this morning. I'm going to put it on the screen. And this is one of the deepest things that I could found, and it's this. <laughs> a key is a piece of metal that fits inside a lock, and it turns to open it. If you didn't come to church for anything else besides that, <laughs> I want you to know your new year is going to be blessed. How many of you guys were really unclear about what a key was until this moment right now in your life, huh? And I just want you to know I, you're welcome for clearing that up. And like I said, I did about 30 hours into that. And after about the 31st hour, I finally just broke it down and I made it into this. And this is a piece of metal that fits inside the lock and turns to open it. Now, I know I'm making a little joke about that, but here's what I want you to know. Having the right key can make a huge difference in your life. Let me ask some of you this. Have you ever been somewhere and you didn't have a key that you needed? That you thought you had the key to unlock your door? You, had, you thought you had the key to your car? You thought you had the key to your house? Have you ever been to the point where you didn't have that key and then you realize just how important a key can be? Keys can be very important. So I did something a few months ago around here at the church that changed my life. So this is my key that I carry. That's it right there. Now, some of you, Micah, do you have your, that big old thing you carry around on you this morning? Where's my, where's my key people? Look at that. Josh, can I see that for a second? That, look at that sucker. That'll cause you to go to the chiropractor. I mean, there's these amount of keys. Does anybody even have even something bigger than that you can carry around? I mean, just keys. The other day I was with Micah walking by the office, and I was like, Micah, what is that? And he was like, well, that's the key thing. And I looked over, and he had a little guitar amp thing he could plug in, and he said, add all these keys. And so there's a big difference. How many know there's these keys, and then you can have this key? Josh, I'm going to give this back to you. And I'm going to tell you why I think this is better. A few months ago, what I did was I called a locksmith. And I said, hey, I want you to come up and I want you to change the tumblers inside all the doors that you can. And I want this key to fit all of those doors. Because it's going to make my life so much simpler. Instead of going through my key ring and saying, okay, which key is that? Which key is that? Which key is that? And you're trying to turn all those doors. I realize now that I can walk in the door and go through all these different things and go into my office. And all I have to have is just one key. What if I could give you one key in 2019 that would open up multiple doors in your life? See, there's things that, I mean, I'm telling you, some of you in your spiritual life, if we could open up your purse we would see all these different keys and you don't know which key opens which door and you're up there fumbling. How many have ever been in the rain and you're trying to get something and you're like, dang, key and it's the wrong one. Did you know that this little key just transformed my life and now all I got to do is get to the church and I know this one key opens multiple different doors throughout this building. I want you to know, I believe it's the same thing in your spiritual life. I believe there's one key that if you will hold on to it in 2019, it's going to totally transform your life and it's going to open up multiple, multiple different doors in your life that have been closed in a while. Can you give me an amen? amen. So if I could give you that key, if you would do me a favor, if, if you would want that key, would you make some noise and raise your hand and say, I'll take it? All right, well, after service, I'm selling them for $100. They'll be out there, and we, we do take credit cards, and uh, we'll all sell you that one key out there. So, no, I'm obviously just kidding you. So, that one key, one key that could change your relationships, your finances, your health, your job, your kids, your marriage, and everything else in your life. If I could give you that one key, would you want it? I want it, and I believe that God in his infinite wisdom came through Jesus Christ as the ultimate locksmith 
and changed all the locks and he gave us the key. The tumbler in our hearts where that key goes in there. Because how many know a key is no good if you just stick it in? Remember, I put that definition up there on purpose because if you just stick in the key, it does you no good. How many know there's a difference in just sticking in the key? How many know you got to turn it in order to do something? Some of you have sat in your church services your whole life and you've been hearing keys and been given keys, but none of you have ever taken those keys and actually applied them and therefore you're frustrated and you're wondering why these doors aren't opening up but the truth of the matter is you have the answer in your pocket you just simply got to start using them and start turning some things and start activating those things in your life amen so here's the key put God first put God first I want to encourage you take notes Let that be one of your 2019 resolutions. Don't just come to church and just sit there. Come with an expectation that God is going to place something on my heart that you need to hear each and every week and therefore write it down. How many of you guys like me can't remember what you did yesterday? So I want to encourage you, as one of your New Year's resolutions, come to church with expectations of hearing what God wants to say. If you had to put it in your notes, in your phone, okay, I don't care. Just write this stuff down. Put God first. I truly believe that putting God first is the key to seeing everything change in your life. Everything. Proverbs 1.7 says this, start with God. Start with God. If there's one key that I could give you this morning, it's that. Put God first. Put God first. Start with God. I believe true change starts with God. If you want to see your relationships change in 2019, then put God first in them. If you want to see your financial situation change in 2019... Put God first. How do you do that? God says he's already in with his tithe. Put God first. If you want to be a better parent in 2019, put God first. If you want to be a better spouse in 2019, put God first. If you want to be a better employee in 2019, Put God first. If there's any, any, any area of your life that needs a change in 2019, then I want to encourage you, put God first. Turn to both of your neighbors and say, put God first. <laughs> Yell at the person behind you and say, put God first. <laughs> it's a nine o'clock service. I know it's our first one of the year and we're, it's early, so we're going to have to help some ways to keep you guys up. The next one we're going to do as a neighbor is going to be slap your neighbor. <laughs> How many ready for slap your neighbor? Make some noise if you're ready for slap your neighbor. <laughs> Praise God. We'll decide if it's the person to the left, right, front, or back in just a little bit. Amen? Or the person on the stage. Matthew 6, says this. Seek First, the kingdom of God. We're talking about putting God first, right? Put God first in everything. And this is what he comes back and he says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And that's why I'm telling you, if you want to be a better spouse, seek what God says about being a spouse. If you want to be a better parent, See what God says about, in his word, about being a parent. We have to seek him first and his righteousness. And then all these things will be given to you. The context of this verse was actually money and possessions. If you go back and read this, starting in verse 19. And people like you and I, see, we get caught up worrying about what we're going to wear and all these different things. And Jesus comes up and he stops them and he basically says this, hey, look at the flowers out there in the fields. 
He's like, you don't see them worrying about what they're going to wear, yet their heavenly father takes them. He said, man, look how good they look. He said, you guys are so concerned about so many different things other than the one thing, the one key that can change everything for you. And he says, that one thing is this, seek me first. Put me first in every area of your life. And if you will do that, then I can guarantee you that 2019 will be your best year yet. How many are believing that 2019 is going to be your best year yet? Make some noise. Come on. That should be everybody in this place. How are we going to accomplish that? Seek God first. Turn to both neighbors and say, seek God first. Jesus should be our first thought, not an afterthought. Jesus should be our first thought, not an afterthought. There should be no more oh crap moments in 2019. And what do I mean by that? When everything goes bad and you tried everything you can in the natural, then usually most of us are like, oh crap, Jesus, I need some help. And see, that's not how God wants us to do. He wants us to seek him first. He doesn't want to be an afterthought in our process. He wants to be the first thought in your process. Don't let it get to the point where it's so bad and then in your relationship you're like, oh God, now I need your help. No, in the very beginning, we need to seek out to God, say, God, I need you before I make this decision. Oh God, I need your help in my marriage this year. Oh God, I need your help in my finances this year. God, I need your help as a parent this year. I'm not waiting until everything gets bad and then cry out to you. No, I'm crying out to you in the very beginning, say, God, I realize I can't do this on myself. I need your help. That's how 2019 is going to be your best year yet. If we will learn to seek God first in our lives, then he will make sure that we have everything that we need. That's what the promise that we read there in Matthew 6.33. If we will seek him first, he who says, I promise you, you will have everything that you need. If we will put him first in every area of our lives, then he will meet those needs in our lives. But see, we've got things out of order. How many know we serve a God of order? And God says this, I want to be first. I kind of, I want to say this, but it could be taken wrong. But kind of like, it's like, God's kind of like the Ricky Bobby thing. If you're not first, you're last. And I think that's how God truly feels. He's like, if I'm not first place in your life, then I'm, I'm pretty much last. And some of you are like, I don't even know who Ricky Bobby is. It's, it's, it's a movie I watched before I got saved called Talladega Nights, and I watched it, and then I had a fresh start, and God wiped my sins away. And, but this part of this movie, he literally says, he says, if you're not first, you're last. And I believe that's how God feels about our relationship with him. If, if he's not first, then guess what? There is no difference with God. God says, no, I want first place in your life. Some of you are so frustrated, you're wondering why things, what is going on with my life? I ask you to do what Ketcher said this morning and examine yourself. Are there things in your life that you're looking to fulfill you, to bring you joy, to bring you satisfaction that were never meant to, and therefore are you frustrated because you haven't put God first? I believe we need a spiritual alignment. How many of you guys have ever been to a, a chiropractor in the natural? Raise your hand. How many know a small adjustment can make a huge difference in your life? It may scare you. How many of you have ever been there? My first experience with a chiropractor was a horrible one. I was out of whack, a lot like us spiritually. And somebody told me, hey, you need to go see a chiropractor. Like we were telling a lot of people, hey, you need to go to church and have an encounter with God. But it's scary because I'm not sure, God, what you're going to require of me. I'm not sure what you're going to ask me, what you're going to want me to do. I want you to know something. There's no fear there. God just simply wants to help you. Yeah. And so I finally agreed to go to this chiropractor. And he asked me, is this your first time? And I said, yes. So obviously he knew. And so I was on the table and I was 
tense as I could be because I had this image of what the chiropractor was going to do. And I think that's the way a lot of people are when they come to church. They have this image that they're going to have to get their crap together before they come to church and come to God. But God says, no, I just want you to come to me. You don't have to have your stuff together. How many know you don't go see a chiropractor unless something's out of line? You don't start coming to church unless you need something in your life. So don't worry about getting your stuff together before you come. God says, just come. And so as I was sitting there on the table, I had expectations of what he was going to do, and therefore I was very tense, like stiff as a board pretty much, because I was like, okay, he's going to do this, I'll do this. And so he just started walking around me and doing what a good carpenter does, and he just started talking to me. And he started asking me questions about my life, and he started doing things, and then he just kind of grabbed my shoulder, grabbed my arm, and he would start doing little circles with it, and then circles with this arm, and he did that with my leg. And so finally I was thinking, well, when's he going to pop me? I was waiting for it, right? But he wasn't doing it. All he was was just like doing little circles. And then he just started massaging my, my shoulder right here. And then he just started grabbing my neck. And he started just going like this. And by that time, so now I've been there for five, ten minutes. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm all completely wrecked. And the moment that I let my guard down, <laughs> bam! And it snapped. And I thought, I'm dead. <laughs> and if I'm not dead, yeah, I'm breathing. I'm paralyzed. Don't move. And then I realized I was fine. And see, I believe that translates into our lives spiritually. We have something made up in our minds that how God is going to treat us. But the truth is we serve a God that just wants to simply help us. And he wants to love us. You don't have to be concerned to come in that he's going to hurt you. And let me tell you something. Any change that he asks you to do is for your benefit. It's for your benefit. Can I get an amen? amen? So let's close by answering a very important question. And that's how do we put God first in every area of our lives? How many know it's easy to say put God first, right? I mean, I'll, I'll, everybody out there, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll put God first. If that means it's going to open up all sorts of doors for me, there's one key, I'll do that. But how many know there's a way that we put God first. And so if I want to help you this morning, I want to leave you this last thought. How do you and I practically on a daily basis put God first? And I believe we find it in John 1.1. 1, 1. And it says this, the word was first. How you put God first place as a Christian is you put the word of God to first place in your lives. You put the word of God above everything else that's going on in your life. You compare your marriage to the word of God. And if there are changes need to come, it comes through the word of God. You compare yourself as a spouse to the word of God. You compare yourself as a husband, as a father, as a spouse, as an employee, as whatever it is. You compare yourself and you put the word of God first. That's why the Bible talks about Romans 12 too, renewing our minds. Because here's how we want to think. When something happens, we want to act out of the flesh. But the truth of the matter is we should be comparing our lives to the word of God. If there's an area in your life that needs a change, it's going to come by noticing it from the word of God. How do you put God first? You make room for God's word. You make room for God's word. As Christians, we must give God's word first place in our lives. We must ask ourselves, what does God's word say concerning our marriage our friendships, our jobs, our kids, our attitudes, our money, and everything else that we deal with on a daily basis. A daily quiet time, listen to me, a daily quiet time with God, I believe, is the one practice that has the power to positively change every aspect of your life. It's the one thing that can change you spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Everything. Everything. How many of you would rather have a, a, a great year in 2009 emotionally? It's been a little bit of struggle, anxiety, maybe depression. You're just out there. Did you know that the one thing that can change everything is alone time with God? The word of God can actually change you spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Those are the promises that we have from God. Amen? There is absolutely no substitute for being alone with God. Now listen to me. 
If you don't have time, you need to quit something in order to make time. Listen to me. Some of you say, I am too busy. Then you need to quit something in order to do something. Now listen to me. Don't get legalistic about this. Because a lot of people say, you know, Jesus woke up early in the morning and he did all these things. And he did. But also there were times that he prayed at night as well. So don't get so caught up. You know, I got to get up at, at 5 a.m. If you're not a morning person and you tell yourself you're going to get up at 5 a.m., you're going to do it for a couple of days, a week at the most, and then it more than likely it's not going to happen. So you need to find out what's best for you and say, I'm going to do that, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the afternoon, or whether it's in the evening. I don't care when it is, but you need to make time to get alone with God. And not only get alone with God, you need to begin to pray. And not only do you need to begin to pray, you need to open up his word and see what God's word says. The Bible says that faith comes by, faith comes by what? Some of you are not hearing the word of God and therefore your faith is not as strong as it needs to be. And you're wondering why you're struggling in your faith. Dare I say it's because you're not spending time with God. Think about this. Your health will improve if you exercise daily. Right? Right? Your finances will improve if you manage your budget daily. Guess what will happen to your spiritual life if you will spend time with God daily. Now, you all know in order to lose some weight, you have to do something on a daily basis. You have to eat better and you have to go to the gym. You know, some of you say, I want to get out of debt. So you had to change the way that you're spending your time and your finances. Some of you say, I want 2019 to be my best year yet. You're going to spend time with God. See what his word says. If there's one thing you can see over and over in the New Testament with Jesus, it's this concept of getting alone with God. Luke 5, 16 says this. Jesus, tell both your neighbors what this next word was. What was it? Jesus often went away to other places to be alone so that he could what? If this is Jesus and he needed time to get alone to be with God, then don't you think that you and I need to find time to get alone with God? Will you close your eyes this morning?